too fucking underrated. Stop playing and go watch this movie. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss blind spotting. Now, this movie is from 2018. It stars Debbie Diggs, Raphael Castle, and it's also written and produced by them. Now, this movie is an understatement to just call it underrated. It like came out and it fell all the way off the radar. But before I get into why you should go watch it, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss all things hyphy. Hey. <laughs> hopefully subscribe to see more of me let's get into this movie now this movie courtesy of David Diggs and Raphael Castle Mr. Hamilton everything himself and you know this wonderful poet you know after you know doing a little reading about the film this whole Raphael whole poet all this bomb poetry all that good rapping that we get courtesy of him it's amazing this movie is brilliant now to start off this movie is a love letter to Oakland, if it's nothing else. You know, from the cars on display in this film, the Bay Area slang, the hyphy music, ugh, sprinkle me, it's all up in here, up and through this movie. It really gives you a take on the characters and them being so proud of where they come from and just fascinated with the things that come out of their mouth later on in the film. Now, getting into our characters, we are promptly introduced to Colin and Miles, our tag team of best friends here. Colin is a convicted felon due to an altercation outside of a club, and he has three days left of his probation, and he is just trying to stay out of trouble. I'm trying to, you know, walk the straight line. I'm not trying to get caught up in no mess. I am looking forward to, you know, no longer being on a curfew, living in a halfway house, restricted on what I can and can't do, just stay away from me with the fuckery. Now, even though Colin wants to resume a normal life, there is this looming threat of just being labeled a felon and him trying to figure out who he is outside of that. And it's not just by the prison system. It's by, you know, his friends, his family, the prospects that he has after he's came out of jail, and also by this ex who has a strong presence, this girlfriend, who once, you know, they had a really good relationship, but now she clearly can't see him beyond what he did and where they left off. Then we get into Miles, his best friend, who is a fucking riot. Now, though Miles is, you know, a really great friend, great childhood friend on up, a great father, seems to be a genuinely funny, nice, free-loving person. He is a hothead, consistently on edge, always ready to attack anyone he feels threatens who he is and what he stands for. Now, even though Miles was born and raised in Oakland, you know, hoard, hoard out here in these Oakland streets, <laughs> he just constantly feels the need to overexert things just because he's white. And it may appear to some people that he's trying to be something that he's not. So even though they have legitimate jobs as movers, and Miles can sell fucking water to a well, he still feels the need to carry around a handgun for protection just in case you know some shit pops off. Not the kind of friend you wanna have when you on fucking probation. I love all the comedy injected into this freaking movie. This is a drama comedy if I didn't mention it before. Like, oh, this gun, Colin, this, this gun. Love the presence of Miles, but you do know that he is no good for their friendship and the change that Colin is going through as a convicted felon. So you look forward to what their friendship progresses to as the film goes on. The movie does a really good job of establishing their friendship and really giving you that brotherly bond. And 
Miles and Collins, you know, friction gives you that, you know, that friend that you had since childhood and y'all got into some shit together, you know, but at some point you grow up and grow beyond the friend and they're just not at that point to grow. And you kind of have to, you know, have that confliction of, you know, do I let this friend go? I've known this person all my life, but yeah, they're not on the same level. Bitch, I'm trying to, you know, live clean. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to get locked up and you carrying a gun. Mm. Now the movie is really funny and really lighthearted, but once we get to the point where Colin actually witnesses an unarmed black man be chased by a policeman and shot right in front of his face, and there's just, you know, this threat on him that, you know, this guy was, you know, running away, he didn't have a weapon, he was a black man, he was a convicted felon also, this could easily be me. So that's something that's always chasing him through the film and really haunting him to the point that he has nightmares. And we get into some of those really great surreal dream sequences that I'm gonna talk about later. There is also a really strong presence of writing, rapping, and poetry in this film in relation to the movie and in the script and what's going on. Oh my goodness, absolutely love it. We have, ugh, I can't wait to, you know, get into the TV show that's based on this. When we have the things happen here and we have our characters transitioning into, you know, just playfully rapping with each other, or, you know, when we have our more intense moments later in the film, or you just have, you know, people just flowing, it's done at such an ease and it's so natural and so confident and you're vibing, you're vibing with the fucking movie so hard. I absolutely love those scenes. I love that here and it just takes you and like, it transcends, you know, very simple scenes and really gets you into the characters. And you also see the banter in their friendship to where they can kind of finish each other's raps. Absolutely love it. I love how lightly it's played in the beginning, but how intense it gets towards the end when we have our lead characters use those same rhymes and it's just all like flowing together. Man, it, she was hot. We also cover a lot of gentrification here. Now we do have a lot of, you know, white ownership coming in, black people being pushed out, all these. I love the way that they use them being movers to show, you know, the gentrification and them cleaning out, you know, old homes just to make space for a new one. I love the talk of, you know, all the tall Oakland trees, you know, being torn down. I love that they have, you know, the new houses smack dab into like, it's like so in your face, but still understated at the same time. There is a strong presence of gentrification in what it's doing to this neighborhood and really how it's making the residents feel, you know, like there's, we're being pushed out of our home that, you know, we've lived in for so long, loved it. And we also use those gentrification-esque moments to include some of our side characters like our Tisha Campbell, our Newman, you know, Newman's here. We um we meet a lot of people here and nobody seems obsolete. I love when we can, you know, cram a lot of characters into a movie and they all have some type of, you know, presence and something in relation. They're not just, you know, there for background. We meet so many people and so much of, you know, every single aspect of Oakland where the issue, you know, some slizzle on the dizzle, one invisible, blizzle, 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 some of that shit happening. <laughs> oh, stanky, stanky. What? Yes. Oh, cool. Bomb. 300 on the cake. cake. What? What? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we meet, you know, so many people in this film and they all mean something. Those are really, you know, small things, but I enjoy, you know, that attention to detail. And then we get into really surreal, poetic rapping moments like the great courtroom scene here that, you know, is a representation of how Colin feels about what he saw with the shooting. And you know how he's really feeling on the inside and just being haunted by the prison system, the judge, the court, the jury, just the impact that jail has had on him and has con and will continue to have on him even though he's a free man. It is freaking epic. Like, oh my God, when we get into, you know, Miles really rapping and his lights out because it's like, like, it is so good. The execution here was flawless. I never felt taken out of the movie. It didn't feel, you know, problematic. I never want, you know, any of the scenes to end here. This movie is almost perfect. We also get into two side relationships here, courtesy of our lead characters. Of course, we have Colin and his ex-girlfriend and that will they want they get back together. There is such a strong connection there, but she just can't seem to see beyond what he did. And you're kind of really like low-key rooting for them because you see there's, you know, a lot of passion left in him for her. And she has the same, but she's just kind of stifled with 
I just remember you with that. Like there is a big discussion of, you know, this rift between her and Miles as far as, you know, he's not your friend. He's and you see that a lot in the movie that he's um really, you know, revving it up in altercations and you know, he's the instigator and he really leans into problems and sometimes creates them. And you have Colin just, you know, kind of to the side and really uh you know not really doing much but somehow he is associated with the terrible things that miles is doing and you know we bring that up later in the film but you know that's that and you have miles perspective where you know i'm your best friend i've always been here i visited you she didn't visit you one time i you know i put money on you she, like she, i was there who was there me nigga i was, I was there <laughs> you have that and you also get into miles relationship now <coughs> the depiction of his relationship here I'm way more fond of it than I was of the um, the show. And uh, I really wasn't planning to get into the show until later because I really don't know what's going on with, with that. But um, it really isn't a strong presence in the film. It's there, but I didn't feel like it was enough to create a whole TV show surrounding their relationship. But... I love the presence of their relationship here and I love the look that she has in the movie The Girlfriend played by Jasmine Jones. I love the look she has and I love um, how biracial their son looks. As far as the show is concerned, I don't see any of that there as far as, you know, their appearance or well, we're going to get into the show. But you have, you know, that uh, thing going there where she just kind of wants Miles to kind of grow up and be you know that dad figure in the house and you know stop some of the frivolous shit that he's doing in the streets and it's kind of Colin's responsibility to horn this grown-ass man in and it's just the whole situation it's like girl no that's that's your man no but it's not just you know the girlfriend he's just held to a standard to be attached to Miles at the hip so whatever Miles does throughout the film Colin is associated with it for better or worse and we see the negative impact that that has on him as a person in their friendship towards the end of the movie. Now we hear about it often through the movie but once we actually see the altercation that actually put Colin in prison I love that they took that moment to still inject some comedy and have the voiceover and it was serious, but it was still hilarious. And we actually get to see, you know, the fight happen. And, you know, him accidentally, you know, the the man catch fire. And most importantly, you see that, you know, Miles was, you know, an antagonizer there and egging it on and really hyping Colin up to, you know, really pound this man into where he is, you know, completely unconscious. And his girlfriend just cannot let that go. The girlfriend, you know, really takes a moment to let him know, you know, Miles is white. You guys were out there together. You were beating him up together. This was a joint effort, but they didn't take him to jail. They took you. And if it, you know, went a little further than that, do you think they're going to shoot him or shoot you first? Oh, <sighs> it's really small moments here, but they're really touching because Colin is so invested in everything. It's re and it's really having a hard time with people telling him that he needs to let go of his best friend who may not be the best thing for him. Now, things, you know, with their friendship get really, really far off of, you know, you just gonna let him drink out of your mug that you made in the third grade. You ain't gonna do nothing, Colin. Like, <laughs> we get way beyond that when we get into the loaded gun situation. Now, as soon as the movie starts, we do see Miles, you know, get really excited to, you know, get a get a gun and feel like, you know, it's something for him to use, you know, prove himself. It's just in case, you know, measurements, just in case, try to try. like, no. And Colin lets it be known, like, this is a dumb decision. Not only shouldn't you buy this gun, but I don't want that gun around me like you know you keep hearing him say you know like you know don't tell me you have the gun this gun you know <laughs> but it gets beyond that and gets serious when we get into uh my son finding the gun and holding it and it's loaded and you know he could possibly shoot himself and his mother is really upset but you um see that he expects Colin to take to take the fall for it and say that it's, it's his gun so he can stay out of trouble and he's like no I'm not doing that shit first no. But we even take it a step further when Colin and Mal, since they are put out of the house, go to the most white, preppy, super gentrified hipster party that I've ever seen. 
And Miles instantly gets upset when people at the party assume that he's a hipster, a white hipster, just like everybody else at the party, like everyone else. And we also have a black man there who just assumes that Miles is going out of his way to act ghetto. So he's already put, you know, in a bad position. Like they think I'm fronting up in here. They got the same tattoo as me. Like, oh, he got his little tight ass, tight ass hipster shirt. I love Miles and his little, did Miles give you like baby early 90s little Eminem vibes. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Him and his little bottom girl because Miles gets into an altercation that he started, but you know, he's trying to defend himself. This whole entire film, it really just feels like, you know, Miles is trying to, you know, defend his blackness and he's not black and he's just, you know, really upset. Like I have to prove myself and prove who I am, whatever I got to do to do that. If I got to book a nigga up to do that, I'm going to do that. And boy, does he. But once he, once he gets into this fight, he gets really upset that, you know, Colin didn't have his back and you really see Colin to the side, just, you know, he has been traumatized throughout this whole movie it's almost like you know someone who's been to the war and came back and you know has ptsd and you know there's just sirens and things going off clicking in his mind that you know you're out here going crazy fighting there's blood you're shooting your gun threatening people out here in the open if the police are called and come are they going to take you or me we really don't know Mo they might take my ass you know my black ass now it's at this point that we probably get into probably my favorite part of the movie as far as you know the dialogue like we really get into some good dialogue here about where they stand as friends and who they are as a black man and a white man and the presence that they have in the city that they live in like we are not one and the same we are not the same and we get you know that talk about you know say it like just say nigga we you know he's very you know like, I'm black, I'm down, I'm hard, I'm this, I'm that. But Miles won't say the N-word because he knows that that's inappropriate. Not only do we touch on the N-word and, you know, who we should and shouldn't say it to and why it probably shouldn't be said at all, but we also talk about being misread as a person. And you get, you know, things from Miles' perspective as to say, you know, I'm a white, you know, you're you're black. You're black. <laughs> Nobody is misreading you. I'm white, even though I'm here and I grew up in this neighborhood. People are always misreading me as something that I'm not assuming, you know, that I'm some white hippie prepster, just period. Not even in this element, even outside of this, someone somewhere is going to assume that I'm a white boy trying to act black when I'm not. So that's why I got to go over the top because, you know, they got me fucked up, Colin. They got me fucked up. <laughs> and then you have, you know, the rebuttal from freaking Colin and it's like, you know, I've been taking care of my shit. Like, I've been doing what I need to do. You're the one out here thinking that I'm trying to be different and have something to prove and change and act white and, you know, be a certain way to, you know, get my girlfriend back. Like, no, I am changing. I've been handling my shit and I've been bringing you along with me for the ride. But no matter how hard I try and what I do, the stupid shit that you go do, I'm constantly associated with. And normally I'm top tier along to the stupid shit just because I'm the black person next to you. Nobody is misreading you and nobody's misreading me either. The point is, once they do misread me, they're going to assume I'm a nigga doing nigga shit when you're the nigga that they're looking for and your white ass is going unscathed in this motherfucker. Uh. But after, you know, that rip happens in their friendship and they kind of separate for the night, we have, you know, two separate moments with the ex-girlfriend and the current girlfriend. And, you know, mostly from Mal's situation, there was, you know, seemed to be some growth on their part in their relationship and them just kind of trying to meet each other where they are and her letting Miles know, you know, you don't have to be anything else but yourself. First of all, grow the fuck up. And you don't have to be anything else for yourself. You don't have to prove anything. And you have him have the revelation, you know, to tell her, you know, don't call me a nigga anymore. Like, it is, you know, a free-flowing term, but I'm not a nigga. And I never will be, no matter how hard I try. I'm just Miles. Just call me Miles. Loved it. And then we have, you know, that reference to blind spotting. Because we have uh, this running theme of her, you know, looking at the vase and you seeing two images and you have that really epic moment of him saying, you know, when you look at me, which one do you see first? And you finally get to, you know, what we've known the whole time. Blur, she was never going to forgive you. Like she was so standoffish. I was like, damn, just give him a little bit, sis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, no, you're always going to see the fight first. And it's, you know, him kind of just letting her go. Now it's at this point that we get to the climax of the movie. And though we have, you know, a very much so free Colin, 
off of probation, free to go and do as he pleases, he's still very much haunted by what he saw and just who he is as a black man who is, you know, a convicted felon who has no prospects. You see the little boy with the cup from the third grade <laughs> is sleeping in his room. Like, I really don't even have anywhere to go. Like, huh. And you have, you know, that riff in their friendship to where, you know, they are working together, but they're not speaking. But you have a moving job and the movers, they just so happen to come to move an apartment that happens to be the officer who shot the black young man in the beginning of the movie. And you just have a Colin who has been on edge the whole film, just feeling like he's being antagonized. Like it's kind of like a cage bird the entire film. And once he's actually free, it's like, what the hell am I even free to do? I'm still a convicted felon. I still, I love that scene when he's walking, when he's took, he's taking the gun from Colin and there's just, you know, that looming sense of that car following him. And he's just about to just fucking break down and tearing up like, I don't even have to, you know, do anything. If they even stop to even maybe want to frisk me and they find this gun, they could just shoot me. They could shoot me without the gun. There is really, you know, a strong presence of, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter things and the things that we've been seeing in the news all up and through this film. But we get into that moment of him actually seeing that man and having that gun and having that whole rap that equates to everything that he's been through, everything we've seen, everything that's been on his shoulder, his friendship with Miles, how he feels about authority, how he feels about being a felon, how just everything. <sighs> Y'all, it is so freaking good. The way it's written is good. The way it's delivered is good. Everything here is executed so well. And you have, you know, that ending with the officer going, you know, I really didn't mean to do it. And, you know, Miles goes, you know, like, are you sure? Oh, it's so good. Everything here, as far as the statement that they are trying to make, is bluntly in your face. Like, they were not trying to sugarcoat anything. And I really think that that's a part of why this film just kind of flew under the radar and nobody really ever mentioned it. <sighs> It's very unapologetic about the message that it wants to send about, you know, police brutality, black man being shot, being a felon, you know, the whole Miles thing, trying to prove who he is and, you know, who's really a nigga, you know, all of that stuff, gentrification. There is so much going on in this film. Watch it. And we even uh, take that moment to end on a comedy note and, you know, have Miles, you know, really center with his friend and, you know, try some of that green juice. And I love when he asks him, you know, asks, asks him, is he OK? And he goes, you know, no, not really. Like, I'm I'm not OK. I don't know if I ever will be OK. I'm alive, but I'm not OK. How can anybody be OK in the midst of any of this? Absolutely love it. Now, once we get into the TV show, as much as I love this movie and they are still very hands-on with this series, I don't know what the hell this series is. This series is nothing that that I thought it would be. Now, based on the previews for this show, I initially thought that, you know, even though it was surrounding our Miles character, it was going to be, you know, us watching some growth on his part because we do get a sense of character development and growth from, you know, how he was in the beginning of blind spotting to how he is towards the end and really kind of identifying with Colin. But no, we instantly jump into, you know, him being arrested for drugs and we just jump straight into his girlfriend. Now the girlfriend here, as well as many characters here. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'm having a difficult time attaching any of them to blackness. Um... <laughs> Now, initially with watching the film and the way, you know, she was betrayed, she did, you know, give me, you know, light skin. She, I just didn't know because with the, I was confused about what she was in the beginning. But based on their son, who is completely casted different here, which I do, I don't really see any of the resent. Like, I'm like, that's a, that's a Puerto Rican baby. Like, what's going on? <laughs> but, um... I didn't see her so much as just a full-fledged black woman in the film. I thought, you know, maybe she was, you know, biracial and, you know, their whole thing. But here, it's presented as if she is a full-on black woman and they have a mixed son. And we have to deal with, you know, the grief of him going to jail. And 
as far as you know today we're still watching it we're still just edging up to her just you know saying to her son out of her mouth your dad's in prison and this is what's going on and that kind of being the entirety of the show so far uh yeah <clears throat> it's not it's not carrying me anywhere like the film did the film is very thought provoking and speaks on so many issues and I get it here that we're you know really focusing on you know incarceration but it's just the show is a little boring now even though the writing is good for the most part and they're really creative with how they like to intersect the poetry and the dialogue at times there isn't one character here that I find interesting that I want to follow and know more about and that's even for our lead characters. The main character that I find myself even thinking about remotely watching this show is you know the black guy with the ankle monitor who's you know trying to find a job and it's not much to go on here. I'm not invested in the show at all. Now, once we get into the highs and lows of each character, as well as, you know, our leads, our, you know, our sister character, the mother, and we really get into, you know, their blind spotting moment and, you know, the grief or what, whatever they're going through in their lives and them, you know, being indecisive and everything. Uh, I don't care. I I just don't know what's going on here. This show has so much potential to be really brilliant, just like the movie, but it's just not connecting. And you know, not only with the poetry, we get a lot of, you know, surreal s dance break sequences in the show where it kind of turns into a flash mob at times or like music videos. And they're cute and entertaining, but um, they're creative, but it doesn't add anything for me, you know, within the show. It doesn't seem as effortless as it was in the movie. It's not really flowing. This show is just, it's a lot going on and it's still, you know, nothing at the same time. It's so hard to explain because they got it so right the first time in the movie. I don't know why it was so hard to kind of recreate that here for a show. And it doesn't help that we don't, you know, have much of our lead characters in the movie to go off of and we're solely focusing on his girlfriend in her braided hair wigs. Yeah. Have some moments in the show, especially with our lead Ashley character where she's presumed to, you know, we have a moment with her sitting at a desk and, you know, she's being uh, targeted by this couple. And it's like, you know, oh, since you've seen the black girl at the desk and you just assume I know where the drugs are because I'm black. We have a lot of because I'm black moments. You even have the mother wanting to explain, you know, what's going on with this, the son being incarcerated and wanting to buy books and kind of make them feel welcome. And we get, you know, African ass books and African balloons. And I'm like, all right. And then we get into the sister character, which is by far one of the most bothersome things to me. Now, I get that the sister is supposed to kind of be the female version of Miles as to where, you know, she is presumed here to be, you know, full white, even though she isn't uh, in real life. Uh, Nigga, 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 nigga. Cause nigga, 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 nigga. I can't quite put into words my feelings towards her character and what is, you know, rubbing me the wrong way. It just seems so problematic, but it doesn't hit for me like Miles did. With Miles' situation in the film, you got so much purpose for why he felt the way he felt and why he was the way he was. With the sister character, it just, it doesn't hit the same and it doesn't feel as genuine. So it makes it really hard to identify with her character and it just appears to be a white girl going nigga, 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 nigga. She seems to be the opposite of Miles for some reason and does seem like she's trying to be something that she's not and really, really prove herself in the most ghetto way. Those were my thoughts on this movie and this blind spotting TV show, which, you know, a quick little tidbit at the end, but I had to mention it because the show showed a lot of promise and I was really looking forward to it after seeing um, the movie and it just didn't hit for me. 
But you guys, please drop down and tell me how you feel about this movie, how you maybe feel about the TV show, are you even watching it? Have you ever seen this movie? If not, go and watch it. Please, let's get that conversation going. I'm really interested to hear people's thoughts on this TV show because I was like, is it me? It ain't me. But I'll see you guys next time for my next video. Bye.